Sydney Sweeney's one excellent actress. Her breakthrough with Euphoria landed her among some of the biggest TV stars right now, and she also starred in a Tarantino movie. Her latest achievement was The White Lotus, which has been bagging awards left and right, and Sydney's had a lot of fun working on it too. In today's video, we'll tell you which co-star she'd do a rom-com with and how she paved her way to Hollywood. First up, the actress doesn't really like the romantic comedy genre. Every actor has their pick when it comes to movie genres. Some love doing period dramas, like Kara Knightley and Saoirse Ronan, while some are crazy for the thriller slash mystery genre, Brad Pitt in David Fincher's movies. We're looking at you. And then there are some like Adrian Brody, whose favorite genre seems to be whatever genre Wes Anderson is, because that director is a genre of his own. Similarly, a lot of them don't like other genres as well. And more often than not, the unlikable genre turns out to be the rom-com one. You will hardly see the big names in Hollywood starring in a romantic comedy, and this genre is heavily criticized by critics and journalists as well. It's like a rom-com's your way into Hollywood, but once you've established yourself, you don't really want to do it anymore. And apparently, Sydney Sweeney is in the same boat. The actress recently appeared in a British GQ video, responding to fans' messages and comments. It was all pretty interesting, but one comment in particular expressed the desire to see Sydney in more romantic comedy roles. Now, while she does enjoy the genre and watching rom-coms like all of us do, she doesn't really want to get into one herself. Afraid is the word she used. It's likely the actress thinks that she won't be taken as seriously if she starts doing those roles. We don't know about you, but we'd love to see her in this type of role. And we never know, people change their minds all the time. Coming up, some things may have changed after The White Lotus. Sydney plays the affluent character, Olivia Mossbacher, in the series. She's a college girl who's taking her friend Paula, played by Brittany O'Grady, to Hawaii with her on vacation with her family. Now, unlike her very, um, strong presence in Euphoria, her role in The White Lotus is quite the opposite. It's subtle and somehow calm. But that's not because of the character in particular. The White Lotus is known and loved for its comedic and satirical undertones. Yes, you can't really call it a comedy show, but we all know it's there. Euphoria, on the other hand, is quite dark and edgy. And if we're being a little too honest, we think it's too dark for it to be a teen drama. Now, ever since she's done The White Lotus, the actress's perception of such roles has shifted quite a lot. In fact, she's actively looking into doing more comedic characters now. And what better place to start than a cute, feel-good rom-com movie? Everyone loves those. And if you've got the right people working on it, the critics would love it too. And we all know that Sweeney is amazing, but her castmates would be just as important in deciding the success of such a project. Well, she's got that part covered as well. Next up, here's the co-star that Sydney would love to do a rom-com with. Our girl is all ready to jump into the genre. And who better to do it with than one of her co-stars from The White Lotus? After all, that show convinced her to explore it. And she's thought of it all and told us all in the same British GQ video. Not only is she interested in doing a rom-com, but she's taking things up a notch as well. The actress would love to do a rom-com movie starring herself and her co-star, Jennifer Coolidge. Now that is something we'll all love. Jennifer's already got a couple of comedy films under her belt, like Single All The Way and the classic Legally Blonde. The Emmy-nominated actress said, could you imagine if I did a rom-com with Jennifer Coolidge? That'd be amazing. We know, girl, we know. It wouldn't be just amazing. It would be everything our dreams are made of. We just hope Jen would be up for it too. Moving on, the cast is known to be good friends. It's likely that Jennifer wouldn't be opposed to the idea of a rom-com with Sydney. Like, the fact that Sydney mentioned her name should be enough for us to know that they're friends and may have even discussed it. But it's not just that. All the White Lotus stars are really good friends with each other. That much was apparent with their appearance at the 2022 Emmys. They gave a group interview of sorts to E! Online on the red carpet, and it was everything. The reporter asked them whether they were seeing each other after a long time. Contrary to what we were expecting to hear, one of the castmates revealed that they've all been seeing each other a lot, which means they're all pretty close to each other. So yeah, judging purely on the basis of this, we think Coolidge would love to be in a rom-com with her co-star just as much. And we need it to happen right now. Calling out all streaming services. Come and pick this up. Following up, who's in the White Lotus's third season? Now, this show started off as a miniseries, but it was quickly expanded by HBO Max and turned into a full-fledged one, given the massive response. That said, it's still an anthology series, with every season bringing in a brand new character and story. We saw how that happened in season two, where Jennifer was the only actor reprising her role of Tanya McCoy, alongside her character's husbands, who made only brief appearances a couple of times. Coolidge is known and loved for her comedy chop, and many fans once argued that she was past her prime, but this actress has 
has proven everyone wrong with her recent performances in The White Lotus. She really showed us all how versatile she can be, with performances ranging from pure comedy to outright devastating. And it was really devastating. Spoiler alert, Tanya dies at the end of season 2. It broke all our hearts, especially knowing that Jennifer won't return for the third season. While it's sad, Coolidge's exit as a recurring character also opens up the possibility of another familiar face returning for season 3 to help with the connectivity in the series. Tanya's husband has been around, played by John Grease, but the character hardly has the same edge that Tanya did. And after what happened in season 2, let's just say he's not very popular. It's likely that some new character from season 2 is carried over to season 3, making this a pattern for the show to follow for many seasons in the future. But we can't help but hope for a break in this pattern. Now for the big one, could Sydney reprise her role? Jennifer was the only season 1 actor to return for season 2, so we didn't see any more of Olivia. It made sense too, her family had gone through a complete development arc, and they were pretty much resolved by the end of the first season. Continuing the cycle in another season would spoil the charm of this show, but that doesn't mean Olivia can't come back for season 3. We're not asking for the entire family back, just Sydney. We don't know where the upcoming season is set, but we don't think that's going to be much of a problem. Olivia is a college student after all. She could come to a White Lotus resort during another school break. Imagine if we get to see a spring break themed season of the White Lotus? That would be beautiful, and Sydney's presence would make it even more so. But even if she doesn't return, we're still holding on to that rom-com. She's going to have to do it now. Let's move on to Sydney's path to Hollywood fame. Well, you know how the saying goes, nothing worth having comes easy. And judging by this actress's success, we can hardly assume that her claim to fame didn't come with any issues. Sydney didn't become a star overnight. No one does. She put a lot of work into it. And it wasn't just her, but her family too. They moved to LA when the actress was only 13, so she'd be able to pursue her acting career. The move really took a toll on their finances. They may have moved then, but the actress only started getting big gigs eight years later, starting her on the real path to fame with Sharp Objects. Recently, the actress recalled how that time had been and how it was before Sharp Objects. One of the most striking things was that she hated going back home to relatives or old friends. They'd always taunt the actress for not having a real job, which really took a toll on Sweeney's confidence. So much so that she started feeling guilty for the sacrifices that her parents had made for her career. Of course, things couldn't be more difficult right now. Her role in Euphoria put her on the world map, and from then on, it's only been success after success for this girl. The 25-year-old said that all those people who doubted her are now congratulating her in her DMs. She said, I truly believe success is the best revenge. Well, it looks good on you too. Finally, what's next for the star? In the GQ interview, the Euphoria actress revealed that she often struggles with burnout because she's booking one project after the other. She often ends up getting very tired and even has trouble sleeping. Now, that also means that her schedule is completely packed. This one has quite an exciting path ahead. She's all set to star in the new Spider-Verse movie, Madam Web, in an undisclosed role alongside Dakota Johnson, Emma Roberts, Isabella Merced, and Adam Scott, and we can't wait. And that's not all. She's also signed a new lead role in the Barbarella remake. But her latest role is what we're most excited about. It's a rom-com alongside Glenn Powell. What if Jennifer Coolidge is in it too? Guess we'll have to wait and see. But that's a wrap on this video. Are you excited to see Sydney in the new rom-com? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.